we're going to be looking at the issue of congruency in triangles. To start with, we're going to explore what information, when we're given that about the triangle, forces us to draw one and only one particular triangle. So let's just start with an example. Um, say we're given information about three angles in a triangle. Well, in fact, we could actually only be given information about two angles in the triangle because we can always work out the third because they angles in a triangle add up to 180. Okay, but let's just say we're given three angles in a triangle. So we're told you've got, must draw me a triangle with uh, angles of 80, 70, and 30. Does that force us to draw one and only one triangle? Well, we've just been working with similarity, so hopefully you immediately answered, no, it doesn't force you to draw one and only one triangle because you can draw a really big triangle that has angles of 80, 70, and 30, and you can draw a really small triangle with angles of 80, 70, and 30. So simply knowing that you have angles of 80, 70, and 30 doesn't tell you exactly one and only one triangle. You can have a small one or a big one. Okay, what if we were given information about the three sides of the triangle now? So say, for example, we're told that we want to have a um, triangle and it must have sides that are of um, size, let's say, 6 and 5 and 4. And we've got to kind of pull these three sides together to make a triangle. So I'm going to pull this one down to join up over here, and I'm going to pull this one down to join up over there, and then I'm going to see, are there other options for how I can join up B and D? Let's have a look. All right, so I join up uh, point C and E to make a vertex of the triangle, A and F to make a vertex of the triangle, and now I've got to try and join together B and D. And as I sort of push the sides together, can you see, because the sides have to stay a particular length, there really is only one way that they can end up joining up. There's only one triangle they can actually form. So, if I'm given any triangle with sides 6, 5 and 4, it's going to look exactly like this triangle here. It might be on its side, it might be upside down, but it's going to be this exact shape and size. Okay, we're now going to look at another example where let's say the three pieces of information we're given about the triangle are that we're told two angles and a side. So let's say we are told we want an angle of 30, an angle of 60, and we want a side equal to 4. Let's see what happens. So side equal to 4, angle of 30, and angle of 60. So the angle of 30 forces me to kind of head off for the other side in exactly that direction. I don't know how long, but it must be that direction. And the 60 forces me in that direction, don't know how long, but must be that direction. Well, there's only one place where those two things cross. And so the triangle I'm talking about has to be this triangle here. Now, even if I drew it on another side, there's 40, that's 60, and 30 is the angles. What's going to happen? The 30 forces it that way, don't know the length. The 60 forces it that way, don't know the length. But there is only one place where they cross. And so the triangle that I'm talking about is this triangle here. And can you see this triangle, this triangle, they're exactly the same shape. So basically being told the length of the side and the 30 and the 60 forces a particular direction to each of the other sides and they only cross in one place. So it totally determines the size and the shape of the triangle. So if you're told two angles and a side, then you can only draw one triangle. So we've just seen that two angles and a side, if we're given two angles and a side, there's only one triangle we can draw that has those two angles and that side. Now what about if we are given two sides and an angle? Let's start by looking at the scenario where we're given two sides and the angle in between them. So let's say, for example, that we're given a side of length 4 and a side of length 3, and we're told the angle between them must be 30 degrees. So this side here 
has to stay at length 4. This side has to stay length 3. I can't change its size, but I want the angle between them to be 30. So I must pull this side to make its angle 30. So let's pull that down. And that's what it needs to look like. Now, I wanted to make sure this angle was 30. This side stayed 4. This side can't change side. It can't change length, all right? I want this length, this length, and this angle. There is only one triangle I can draw now because the only way to make this a triangle is to join up those two points. And so the only triangle I can make is a triangle that joins up those two points. So if I'm told the length of a side and another side, and I'm told what the angle between them must be, there's only one triangle I can draw that will do that. Okay, let's look at another scenario where we're given two sides and an angle. But in this case, let's start with being given the sides. So let's say again we've got a side of 4 and a side of 3. But in this case, we're going to have the angle not being between those two sides, but somewhere else. Okay, so I've got this scenario. This side length, this length can't change, this length can't change, and I must have an angle here of 30. Let me try and make a triangle there. Well, I'm going to first start by drawing a line, right, to make the third side of the triangle, which will come out at 30 degrees here, but I don't know exactly how long it will be. So let's have a look. Let's just draw that in um, at 30 degrees, and I'm just going to make it really long because I don't know how long it'll be, and then I'm going to see how long it'll be. Have to be. Now, to make a proper triangle with all these facts, I need to have this length remain the same. I need to have this length remain the same. So this little F point here must join up with this line to nicely close off our triangle. So let's see where, where, how we can make that happen. Well, we can make it happen here, right? There is a perfectly good triangle, which has a side length of 3, a side length of 4, and an angle of 30 degrees. But that's not the only possibility. Have a look here. If I put that side joining up nicely like that, I still have everything I wanted. A side length of 4, a side length of 3, and an angle of 30 degrees. But it's a totally different triangle. Look carefully. With the side length of 4, the side length of 3, and the angle of 30 degrees, there are two different triangles we can see. Here and here. So, if I am told two sides and an angle, if that angle isn't sitting between the two sides, then I don't get one and only one triangle. Now, right angle triangles are a special case. If I've been told that I've got 90 degrees in my triangle, then I'm talking about a right angle triangle. And if you remember Pythagoras, and we're going to come back to this again, with Pythagoras, if, I, um, if I'm in a 90 degree triangle and I'm told two sides of the triangle, I can always work out the third side using Pythagoras. So the minute I'm told it's a right angle triangle and I'm told two sides, I can immediately figure out the third side. And so there will be one and only one right angle triangle with sides of that length. Okay, so to summarize what we've just seen is if we have two triangles that have exactly the same sides, right? The side lengths, this side is the same as this, this side the same as this, this side the same as this. Then these two triangles are exactly the same triangle. This one's just more on its side than this one, right? Whatever. Just been turned around a bit, but they're the same shape and the same size. Because we've just seen, if we're given the size of the three sides, there's only one triangle you can draw. So these two are identical. And we use a special word there. We say that they are congruent to each other, which means they're exactly the same shape. And in addition to being the same shape, they're the same size. And we use that symbol for congruence. 
Okay, then we also saw that if we were given two angles and a side, so we're given two angles and a side, we just saw there's only one triangle you can draw that has those two angles and that size. So these two triangles are absolutely identical. If you're given, you know they've got the same two angles and the same side, then they are absolutely identical. They're congruent. We've also just seen that if you're given a side and another side that are equal to this side and the other side, and the angles in between them, and this is important, it has to be the angles in between those two sides are equal, then we saw there's also only one triangle that you can draw like that. So these two triangles are congruent. They're identical. They're the same triangle. Remember, we saw if the angle wasn't between them, then there were those different possibilities of triangles. So you can't conclude if you know two sides and an angle that isn't between the two sides um, are the same in two triangles that you're talking about exactly the same triangle. And then the right angle triangle is special because the minute you know two sides of a right angle triangle, you actually know the third side. So if you've got two sides in a right angled triangle, then you know that if these two sides are equal to those two sides, then these two triangles have to be congruent, are exactly the same. So these are the cases of congruency, and we summarize them like this. And it's important you know them. Side, 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 angle, angle, side, side, angle, side, right angle, hypotenuse, side. Okay, let's look at this kind of question that they're likely to ask us. What they're likely to ask us is a question like this. Is triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF. Now, there are four ways we've just seen, right, that we can say that triangles are exactly the same, they're congruent. We can either do it by showing that they've got exactly the same sides, or they've got a side, an angle, and a side the same, or they've got two angles and a side the same, or they've got right angle hypotenuse side the same. And this is the one we've got to be a little bit careful, right? That angle must be between the two sides. Okay, so we've got to use one of those four ways. Now, a quick question. Why can't we just say, hey, these triangles just look very much the same? I mean, I look at these two and they look like they're the same. So why can't we just say, well, they look the same, they're congruent? And that's an important point because in grade nine, when we're starting, we're now starting to get away from, hey, it just looks like the same. It looks like it's a parallelogram. It looks like these two triangles are the same. We actually have to work from the given information. So the thing is that even if these things were just one millimeter different from each other, like a teeny weeny little bit different from each other, they'd actually still, just to our plain eye, look the same. So we can't just rely on our eye to say, oh, yeah, no, this looks the same. Let's go for it, right? At this point in geometry, we are go have to operate off the information that we are given. We can't go by looks alone. So we have to operate from what have they told us? They've told us this is the same as this. They've told us that is the same as that. They've told us that is the same as that. And nothing else. We can't assume anything else other than what they've actually told us. And we have to operate from that to tell whether we've got congruent triangles. Now here, the answer is for these two, well, look, we've got sides that are the same. We've got sides that are the same. And we've got the angle in between those two sides that are the same. So we're dealing with this case of congruency. So we can say, yes, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And we give the reason. Side, angle, side. Let's have a look at the next one. All right, they look pretty much the same, but are they actually from the information given? Well, look, we've been given a side and a side and a side and a side and an angle and an angle. But this is that horrible case where that angle isn't sitting in between the two sides. And so it isn't one of the cases of congruency, right? For congruency, we need, for side, if you've got two sides and an angle, that angle must be between the two sides. So, for the moment, we can't say whether these two are congruent or not. There's not enough information to, 
tell us whether they are or aren't congruent, right? So we can't give an answer to this one. We can't prove these two things to be congruent. We would have to have some more information. Okay, in this last little one here, I just want to actually point out the meaning of a particular word that we use when we're talking about these things. We talk about corresponding angles. So what does corresponding mean? It means in the same place in the triangle. So if you have a look here, for example, this angle here in the triangle sits between these two sides, right? Now, is this angle B a corresponding angle to angle D? Well, the answer to that is no. It's not sitting in the same place in the triangle, right? Because angle D is between the two equal lines, right? So angle the corresponding angle in this triangle must sit between those two equal lines. It would be this angle A here, right? So A and D are corresponding angles in these two triangles. This little angle B is not in the same place in the triangle as this angle D. So just an important word, because we're going to use it a lot, we talk about the corresponding angles being equal, or the corresponding sides being equal. Those means that they're in the same place in the two triangles.